and gentlemen, for both of you, I'd say it was a very nice game with you getting back to form. This is now your fourth in the last five games. You've gone over double figure scoring, and that's a big difference maker for this offense. And as for you, your second double double of the season. Congratulations on that. Thanks. But uh, when you two go and off on each other, like say on offense, and after that game against Louisiana, I'm sure you were begging to try and get a little more of an aggressive tone early. What mindset did you have? kind of going into the game to allow yourself to free up your shot more than you did against Louisiana? Um, I had a meeting with Coach T.J. Johnson before the game today, and he just told me I got to be more aggressive. He said, if uh, we want a better chance of winning, I have to be aggressive. I have to put some points on the board. And I did a poor job of that against Lafayette, just going through the motions a little bit. And then today I just came out looking for more for my shot and just being a little bit more aggressive. Kevin, okay, uh, Coach was talking about how their, their team that kind of lacks depth right now. I think they only played seven or so. Right. Um, did you guys think that, you know, eventually this team is going to break if you guys if you guys just kept pressing? You know, they were getting some offensive boards, later those boards went to you guys. Did you think right. you just kept the foot on the gas? It been yeah, um, for sure. Um, I remember, like, the seven, seven six-minute mark, uh, we're up, like, four or six, and we're, coach was telling us, let's just um, put our, our foot on their throats, um, so to speak, just to um, make them feel less confident in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Coach brought up free throws as a concern uh, for him. Is that something you're trying to work on bettering? Of course. Um, it's just all mental. I feel like I overthink it too much. Um, so we just got to just continue to um, practice free throws every day and be confident at the line. I feel like we, we missed a lot of free throws. Father, I got to ask about the J.R. Smith. Uh, <laughs> after the three. Uh, you know, what <laughs> um, were you feeling? Uh, I felt good. I mean, I missed a couple open looks before that one. So uh, it felt good to watch that one go down. And I see Nigel do a little bit of the uh, J.R. Smith, so I had to finish it out next time I hit one. <laughs> and uh, uh, a sequence before that, you know, the outlet goes to you, and then he kind of fumbles it, and then yeah. he just threw it. You know, what happened? Did you just kind of lose track of the ball? Um, I don't know. I tried to run before I really had the ball. Right. And when Nigel had the ball, coach was saying, patient, be patient. And Nigel threw it because I told him to throw it to me. Mm -hmm. And I see the ball going out of bounds. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't let this go out. Coach is going to be all over me. <laughs> so I just held someone and threw it up, so hope something good happens. Yeah. Nigel made a play. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, uh, with Malgium and Cray not being in there, you Manuel King played a whole bunch, and Nedja, you know, getting in there in the paint too. How big have those guys been stepping up in, in his place? Um, they've been really big. Um, for us to be a great team, we're going to need um, eight, eight guys. So um, with those freshmen um, and, and Emmanuel stepping up, it just makes us a better team if we all can, they all can play 10 plus minutes. It's all good for us. So it's really big for us. Oh, no, uh, sorry. I know Nigel's uh, grandfather just passed away. Right. Uh, what is his mental well-being kind of been around the um, More locked in. Not really changed much on the court. Um, he's the same Nigel. He's He knows this basketball is really important to him, so he just wants to lock in and help us win. Yeah, when he's on that court, he knows nothing else matters. It's just straight basketball. You don't let anything outside come and affect his game. What's that, what, what's that say about him, you know, that he's able something big like that happens when he's he, still able to focus? He's a special kid. Not a lot of people can do that, especially with a close relative like that. So that says a lot about his character. His toughness. And certainly to say that tonight, a stat that while sometimes the rebounds do tend to get away, y'all do lead the SBC in blocks per game and come out tonight with a strong showing of seven with two for Emmanuel and Nigel Prejevic. What kind of uh, feeling does that give y'all knowing that when you're playing a team that has only seven people playing and most of them are underclassmen, so y'all have the experience factor. Right. What kind of mindset do y'all look to help take advantage when you can keep getting that mentality down low that it's going to be hard for them to score? Mm. I mean, it helped us out a lot, honestly, because uh, guards, we got to put pressure on their guards, so sometimes we get beat off the dribble, but I mean, it helps to know that we got some rim protectors down there, so we don't got to worry as much. So after a tough loss on Saturday, uh, the team really started with slow the first half. What was the difference between the first half and the second half, and what led to the struggles in the first half? Um, we knew that um, last few games we come out kind of slow on the second half, so we just um, decided just to um, be more aggressive on both ends of the floor and play harder. At the end of the day, um, I just feel like we played harder and were more in tune in the second half. I know you guys are looking to build some momentum now, uh, get a winning streak going. You know, Casper says 
40 minutes of defense has kind of been the difference between, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you guys haven't played that 40 minutes yet. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the key to playing that? Is it mental toughness? Is it just locking down and getting, I don't know, just – Focusing on you guys, I don't know how to Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's hard to put a certain thing on it. Um, I just feel like we just got to focus in more, play, put a whole game together. Um, I don't like winning these on one game, losing one game. So I just, we just got to go in that the mentality we're going to win. Mm-hmm. Don't come in and I don't know, they're a good team. They beat us last time. We just got to come in and determine um, we're going to beat these guys. And uh, ULM, did they play like a team that's looking for some momentum? Because obviously their season is probably not going the way they thought. Did, right. you, did they play, come out? And... I mean, they played pretty hard. They played play tough. Um, I mean, it's conference. Every game is going to be tough. And in the day, whoever wants it more is going to win. And uh, one thing about OJ, last game, of course, he went two for 11 and didn't have his usual shooting night that he's close to. He doesn't take that many shots. But right. Having to outperform against Nick Capola, who's currently one of the best passers in the SBC, what kind of, uh, how impressed were you to say OJ not only outperforming him overall, but also in assists in this game six to three? Um, OJ knows um, he needs to be more aggressive, but at the end of the day, he needs to, uh, his defense is first. So he definitely did a great job on, on him. Um, with OJ, it's just a more feel. If he feels it, his jumper is there, or be more aggressive, he's going to take it. But if not, he's going to get um, do what it takes to get us open and make the right play. And we had a lot of emphasis this week in practice on putting 40 minutes together on defense. And I think OJ took that upon himself to put pressure on Nick the whole game. And I think that took him out of his groove a little bit. He had to work harder for his shots. And I think the two of 10 that Capola shot was some, of, uh, some fatigue.